meeting, I want to let you all know you probably know we're being recorded. Right. Okay. And Patty, I'll have you explain a little more what's going on with the uh, cable vision. Yes. So, um, what administration uh, and including city councilors want uh, meetings to be accessible to the public um, through our NCTV station. And so we've been provided, as other um, city departments have been provided with a camera, and this, this meeting and any other public meeting held here will be um, taped. And then NCTV staff comes, picks it up, and then it airs. So I can't tell you when it will be on, I can't tell you how soon you're picking it up, but that's pretty much the procedure. So at some point, um, if you look at the schedule on NCTV, which is channel 15, you will be able to find out uh, when it is going to be aired. Or maybe you can even call the station and find out when it's going to be aired. But I wouldn't call like tomorrow and find out because they, won't they know. probably don't know. I'll have my agent call the station. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, everybody should be aware it's that the camera's bill. on and it's recorded. And as they all you say, you know, once it hits uh, the uh, internet, something to be there you go. Are we allowed to be filmed and stuff like that? Are you allowed to be? No, no. Do we, we have to sign a form? Sometimes people have to sign I a form. I have not been instructed about okay. that. And when are they going to start doing it here and stuff? Uh, do you want me to ask that question? Well, I don't know. I, I just, you know, because every, I mean, usually, I mean, I know in, in my my situation, people have to sign releases to be allowed to be filmed. I don't know. I believe so. Okay. So we turn to the lawyers. Certainly. Yeah. Certainly recorded. Well, I refer to the public. There's a big group. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Nobody knows how to release I will find out that. I will make that inquiry. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay, this is the Council Asia meeting for Thursday, January 9th, till each month at 1.30. And we'll open uh, with public comment. I see no one. I, no? So we'll continue. I'd like to make a motion on the approval of the minutes from a December meeting. Bob, I'll second by Jim. Any discussion or corrections or deletions? Or... No. Okay, hearing none, all in favor that they be approved, say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> none. No abstaining. Okay, we're going to have a staff report, and Helen Roman Walters is here right now. And you're on, Helen. Come on, okay. Do, so, do people want Ella to stand? Would you like to stand? I could be sitting in my office, I can't stand. You can hear her. Actually, no, I want to come right here. Okay. Oh, okay. I just wanted to say hi, who you were. Hello, all. Oh, okay. hey, hey, Helen. So, hi. So, Patty has asked me to speak about. Um, the last few months of Fitness Center and medical transportation. Fitness Center has exploded, and I guess everyone's watching all those things on television, you know, making their resolutions and all those wonderful things. Now, in November, we had one new member, one, just one new member, but we did have uh, 90 already, you know, already members, current members for November, come. And they came 541 times, so I think that's pretty good. Ooh. In December, we had 95 current December members come, and they came 549 times. And I think that's great because of all the holidays that we have. I mean, they're still coming. We did have 16 new members in December. So we start to see that, that building towards you know, resolutions and all that. Since we now have a Wednesday evening membership, in November of uh, 2013, we had uh, three members come five times. So three people came, and they came, you know, maybe two came once, and the other one came more times, for a total of five. And in December, we had four members come 
and they came five times, uh, a total of five times. We have no new out-of-town members, and we have one new under-60 member. Now, in January, I'm working on um, scheduling of orientations. I already have, today's the ninth, and I already have 10 scheduled with 12 pending, which means I'm still waiting for paperwork either from their physicians or from them in order to, uh, you know, begin the process of uh, the orientation scheduling. So I think that the fitness center is doing very well. Um, when I first started working at the fitness center, afternoons were, boom, you could, I could take a nap. Um, it's never empty there now. Never. Um, and that people have an interest in coming in the evening, even though it's a small interest, that's going to build because I see that the membership is also becoming younger and more able-bodied. So they're not afraid to come out at night, like myself. So, um, for medical transportation in November, we provided 30 rides. One was canceled due to illness. In December, we provided 47 rides with four canceled due to rescheduling or illness. So far for January, I have 18 rides scheduled, and this is just the ninth. Um, but so far out of those 18 that have been scheduled, three were canceled because of bad weather or illness. So that's another program that is very stable and um, it, it's ongoing. And I think it's pretty healthy. And, um, People are happy with our volunteers, our drivers. We have wonderful drivers. Some of them um, become snowbirds, and some of them uh, come during the bad weather and leave during good weather. So, so it's, a, it's an interesting, it's an interesting group that we have. And um, does anyone have any questions about these things for me that they can answer? Jim, how many drivers do we have? We have approximately 12 drivers, and that fluctuates uh, depending on, you know, illness or someone's, you know, going away the way that you do, and you're gone for, you know, a few months at a time. So, uh, you know, summer times we know we have this person, and then winter times we'll have someone else. We're always looking for drivers, Jim. <laughs> He's been there, done that. Any other questions? Thank you. It was a good report. I appreciate you coming. Um, so just as a review about the fitness center, um, that originally when we opened the fitness center, we had a person um, in the morning and a person in the afternoon who uh, staffed the fitness center and the fee to be a member was $35 and we had a very limited membership and so after review um, we were really running in the uh, red so we switched how we were doing it and basically there is no on-duty staff in there and the fee was dropped to $10 for Northampton seniors and um, those from other communities or 55 and up to 59 paid a higher fee of $15 and so basically that's how it's run and because the fee had been dropped we had so many more members join so obviously the um, impact of the cost uh, kept people away and um, I think as Helen said with the uh, Wednesday nights it'll be great when pe more people start joining in on Wednesday and that's a different membership it's the same dollar amount but it's you have to have a different you have to be a member for Wednesday nights uh, and then just as a review about the medical transportation that programs run by volunteer drivers and seniors pay um, a fee for where they're going and it's within Northampton and there's only so many destinations outside of Northampton and it's volunteers using their cars uh, to do this transportation so it's, a, it's an important program. And so Helen coordinates uh, all of the medical transportation rides. 
Okay, thank you, Patty. Now we'll go on to staff. Well, we have that already. Uh, the finances are FY14 and 19, 2015 budget. So you have the sheet for what we have in personal services and uh, ordinary uh, our operations in maintenance. Um, so obviously to looking at this, it's, uh, we do have funds in there. Uh, and I start looking at where we are with personal services because we, we meaning our revolving accounts are what supplement our budget. So um, basically we have more funds that we have to put in to pay off the, um, or pay for our staffing. And then um, in terms of the, well, if there's questions about this FY14 budget before I get into FY15. So we're solvents right now. The professional and technical services, does that also include the uh, van and any repairs like that? No. 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 That's not different. No. The van, I'm going to say, and uh, you had reported maybe the last two meetings, mm -hmm. um, we've, we, between both the vans, we've had to spend more than uh, $2,000 mm -hmm. for repairs, and we don't get any appropriation from the city for our okay. vans, and that mm -hmm. come, how we pay for that is through, well, the Florence Savings Bank grant helps pay for what we do with transportation, um, as well as fundraising events or um, donations that we receive from the community or fundraising that's pretty much how we pay for a lot of things that we aren't able to get through our budget so, so they're both repaired and uh, running with this cold weather yes I, the uh the wheelchair van was the one that had a lot an extensive mm -hmm. amount of work done the caravan wasn't so bad but that's not really the van that we always transport people in. it's the uh, wheelchair we on the bike van. And you will start working on the 2015 budget shortly, I assume. Yes, we uh, had a department head meeting this morning, and the mayor announced uh, that we will begin working on the FY15 budget. And uh, what we need to do as department heads is come in with a level services budget. Uh, so we can't add staff. It has to pretty much be including any step increases or colas in terms of staffing, but not to uh, include new staff in, in the uh, budget. So it's what we're doing currently. And that's due in February. So I'll uh, just trying to think. I think it's, was it February 9th? He said four weeks. So I'll be able to do some presentation the 13th about the budget. And if anybody has ideas, you know, let me know um, once it's being worked on. So I don't think there's any huge changes that you'll see in the budget. Any questions, yeah. Patty, on the, any finance problem? Hearing none, we'll move on to the director's report, Patty. Um, we will be having uh, two staff meetings um, to begin the planning, uh, I shouldn't say to begin, but to uh, move forward with our 2014 schedule with all of our special events and fundraisers that would go from um, February through December. And uh, it'll be listed in the Chronicle, our newspaper, uh, what we're coming up with. So it's important for people to be able to plan ahead for things like the holiday dinner, the potluck, the health and safety fair, and then a number of the fundraisers, which all haven't been established. That'll happen when we have our staff meetings uh, to figure out what, what it is that we're gonna do in order to supplement our, our budget. Um, and uh, currently I'm working on a project, um, and I mentioned it at the last board meeting, the Senior Tax Workoff Program, which is not um, new for, but that's a concept, 
there's 145 communities in Massachusetts that have such a program. And so basically I'm uh, beginning the research on what other communities are doing. Uh, and this is one of the mayor's uh, initiatives for, uh, that he spoke of in his inaugural speech. So that's getting work done. It's pretty interesting uh, what it can do for those uh, seniors in Northampton who are um, who would be income eligible. Uh, and I'm also getting information from the planning department to get an idea of, and not just for this project, but how many, what what is the uh, income level of seniors in Northampton? Because one of the things that I'm beginning to hear is that we have a lot of very wealthy seniors in Northampton, and that may be true, but very a lot of them versus how many really are living beyond or below the poverty level. So I think that the statistics will be interesting um, as a piece of information that can be used to look at the overall community, which would include Leeds, Florence, and Northampton. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we will be having um, groups coming in to use the senior center. And when I say that, it means that they will be renting. Um, you may have seen in the newspaper that Bay State Medical will be here doing a mini medical school. So that has been in the newspaper. Uh, they will be here for, uh, for eight weeks. And the benefit to that is they'll be here on a Wednesday night. And we have our programming in Senior Center open on Wednesday night. So um, again, it's to use the building to the fullest. And also, they are paying rent to be able to use the building. And I thought it was going to be on King Street in their facility down there. No? No, it's here. They've been trying to make an arrangement to have it here. And they like this building. And it's a perfect location off of 91. So there's a lot of advantages. Are they going to be using the great room? or? Yeah, they'll be in the great room. It'll be set up like a classroom. Um, our, the Hampshire Coral Society is back um, on January 21st. Uh, they took a break between um, November and they'll be, as I said, starting January 21st. So we like them in the building. They're a great uh, tenant to have. Uh, group Sing began last night. Group Sing comes once a month and uh, we have Group Sing through a grant that we received from the Arts Council. And so once a month, those 50 and older come in and sing, and they have a wonderful time. And uh, Rick Roy Fadri is the person who um, organizes that. And Ashley Cantio Bella, who used to be our program coordinator, is a volunteer for that group sing. Um, CISA will be coming back again this year to do their annual meeting. Um, and that's scheduled for the end of March. And uh, Five College Learning and Retirement will be back to do their uh, sessions. On, uh, it'll be March through May, and they're here on Fridays. And so that's always a, a nice group of people in here as well. They offer some great programs for uh, seniors. And so those are some of the ones that are at least starting uh, at the beginning of this year. So it's a lot of scheduling and uh, making sure that what they want we can actually do and after last meeting when we talked about the AV system and the headaches with that and the training and you know that I you know again I thank you for voting to uh, have a fee addressed with that uh, because of the staff time that it takes uh, I had reported about low impact class okay <clears throat> we had two classes on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and because we lost the funding from Highland Valley Elder Services um, and the cost of that class uh, to pay the instructors, uh, we were going to have one class, 9.30 to 10.30, and then the 10.30 to 11.30, would they watch a DVD, an exercise DVD. Um, and so there was a lot of discussion about it and uh, some of the members of the class came up with some different ideas so heather and i met with them on uh, monday to hear what they had to offer and i did some other calculations to figure out uh, what could we do in order to have still two classes i'll just back up by saying that by having only one instructor for one class it was leaving a gap for many people between 
somebody needing to have eye drops at a certain time or uh, people don't usually get up that early for a 9.30 class. It's just a, a variety of issues. And again, you know, we have to look at the bigger picture where it's not just those 25 people in a class. We have to look at everybody's needs. Um, and the idea really is we need more people in those classes. That's, that's why we, we, we didn't have enough people to really keep two classes going who would pay a fee alongside with the grant and with the money that we supplemented that program with. Um, so really the bottom line is more people. If there are more people in the class that you can count on every single uh, class, then there would not be this issue. So what, what we are going to be doing now is, um, you know, again, I looked at what would happen if the fee to the class, which is not anything I ever wanted to do, um, you know, to keep it a great class, a, a reasonably priced class. So someone actually came up with two different ideas. One would be that um, one class would pay more money. They would pay $4 for the class. Um, whereas the other class would only pay two. Well, that's really not fair because I guess the thought was that people who could pay four dollars would go to that class. But really, if you look at it, if you could go to a class for two dollars versus four, which one would you go to? So um, you know, at least that was some creative thinking on someone's part. And the other was to um, increase it to three dollars a class. And again, my point was not to raise the fee, but if, if they want two classes, how can we do it? So they agreed um, to pay $250 a class. So now from $2 to $250, that we'll be able to offer the two classes again. The instructors are able to reschedule themselves to be here um, for the six classes during the week. And I said we would evaluate it in three months to see how we are doing financially. I think in figuring it out with increasing it to $50 that there's a couple hundred dollars short, but you know, I look at it like, okay, we'll do a, a lottery tree or we'll have some raffle or something that something can bring in the money to help that out. So we'll keep track of it for um, three months to see where we're at with it and then go back. Walter has a question. Maybe you want to consider uh, giving them a break if they pre prepay the fee. <coughs> and that way you're going to be able to know what you can do and how much you can do and then fill in the blanks with three or four. Yeah. What we have people do is sign up a week in advance, mm -hmm. um, but that it doesn't help, help you necessarily because you have the instructor coming in, in mm -hmm. anyway. So if there's five people in the class, that's what you have. If you have 25, that's what you have. So we, don't, we can know on Friday how many people sign up. You know, it doesn't financially it doesn't help us to know that um, because the instructor's here I don't think we would be able to keep an instructor if we called on Friday and said we only have five people and you can't come in because we don't have enough people signed up and well, it's this low impact has been going on for many many years you know before we were in this great building we were down um, at the VFW we were in um, the community room at me, <clears throat> Tobin Manor and the, the program has just gone in a whole number of ways and so we've changed that program to meet the needs of um, some of the issues um, you know bullying in the class conflict with people not sharing seats you know offending people um, too many people in the class and that's why we went to two classes and so you just have too many like people kids. and you now have two yeah. classes and you don't have enough people always for both classes. But really the bottom line is we just need more yeah. people. We, we can only have 25. In each class. In each class, right. And you mentioned given eye drops. No, we, we, somebody has eye drops at a certain time so they were not going to be able to come to the 930 class. So there were a, a number of people who because of it only being offered by an instructor one time on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, they would not be able to come. Because it took them a little earlier. I mean, I take eye drops, so I'm just uh, You know, I, I, there, there are many things that can go through your head about how you could figure out a situation, and, and, and 
Yeah, we had one woman that her husband um, gets picked up by their care, and sometimes the bus doesn't come in time for her to be able to get to the 9.30 class, and then we had somebody else who is a crossing guard, and she's still working, doing crossing guard services, and wouldn't be able to get here for the 9.30 class, so there was um, an array of issues that were brought to our attention as to why um, People, it wasn't, the change wasn't going to work, so they, you know, they agreed to pay an additional um, 50 cents a class that enabled us to be able to offer the two classes. Um, well, that, that uh, amounts to 750 a week, then, right, mm -hmm. for the three classes. I, I think what was point was maybe they paid for the month. And it, it, are they able to pay for say, a month or in advance? Then you would at least know you've got the instructor for a month. You've got this many people. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I'm going to say about that, and I, I hear what you're saying, and I'm not disagreeing with it or being um, obstinate about no, it. No. It's that um, the, the considerate, a lot of people have to pay week to week. They can't pay yeah. that much. Yeah. And I'm just telling you all the kinds of conversations that we've had over and over again with a number of people. Um, so I think it's a real hurdle that people were willing to pay 250 for the class. Um, I wish we could do that, but still, if they paid a month in advance, um, and it ended up that we still didn't have enough people, the instructors aren't going to go bouncing back and forth about, well, we can't have you this week because we don't have the, the money yeah. with the uh, participants um, paying the fee. Um, so I think we've gone all over the place. I think we've got something good happening right now. I haven't heard a lot of... Um, people in the class who are disgruntled. And I know sometimes it's like, you know, can you just, you as a member, you want low impact, can you be a little more accommodating uh, to do it at 930 or do yeah. your eye drops earlier or whatever the situation is. And, and um, you know, we're yeah. working with like, human behavior. So, and not not me. Me. I, well, I'm, so we just you know try to hear everything and figure out how we can only do it. There is a really good byproduct with the way we changed it though. It is my photo class is now going to go for another ten weeks at thirty bucks a person at ten. So that's three hundred dollars per head for ten weeks. So we couldn't have had that the way the first thing was going to go because you guys had the the TV. Now well, with the TV true, yeah. able, yeah. with the TV being able to be used. For the class, the, the TV class, or the, that class, mm -hmm. there's money that we wouldn't have got. Right. So, um, in the next chronicle, there will be an article about low impact, and you know, again, January, it's time everybody think about losing weight and being healthy and having a better lifestyle and all of that. Um, so, we're going to feature a lot of what we do here for uh, making yourself a better being um, health wise. So there'll be something about low impact because we do want to get more people uh, into the into low impact, but into everything. We want people to be here and to fill our classes. And I mean, it's great when you know you have to say, "I'm sorry, the class is filled." You know, we have something like you know Jim's class that there are just people you know jumping over each other to get in the class, and then you have others other classes that you know you might get three people for. And it's, you know, it's a great class to do, but there's just not the uh, people signing up for it. Yeah, I can, I've turned 15 people away this month. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm seriously thinking about running two, one on a Wednesday morning and one on Wednesday afternoon. So. Well, then you have to kind of look at it the way the colleges do. The football program plays for all the other sport programs. Yeah. You know? We'll have Jim for the extra money. Exactly. Yeah, Jim. <laughs> Jim is one of the most wonderful instructors because he works for free. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I've also been asked to teach a writing class on Wednesday night. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. That would make it a busy Wednesday. You can just camp out. <laughs> My wife says you spend more time at the senior center than you. <laughs> well, she could always accompany you. No. <laughs> she she likes this. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to report about the outreach breakfast program is going very oh, well. Um, we've had it for 12 weeks now, and we've had 182 uh, units of service. So that's how many breakfasts have been served thus far. 
And uh, I think what, one of the things we did, and it was sort of unintentional, is uh, we only set up some of the tables in the uh, bistro. So now people actually have to sit with other people because all the tables don't have the tables set up. Uh, and so it's nice to see people who are in there and talking to other people and having breakfast. And again, Barbara Fungaroli and Mary Listowski are in doing the breakfast, and Bob is one of the servers along with Kate Orman. And uh, it's nice to see newer people going in there together. We had a gentleman from Havenville come in uh, uh, last Wednesday, mm -hmm. and he came in specifically because he wanted to sit and talk to people. Mm -hmm. And he sat at the table with someone else, and he said he went to the Havenville one, and he was the only one there. Oh, they do it in Havenville too? Yeah, and he said, uh, who couldn't talk to anybody there? They're, it's very important. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I will I say that in talking to Belchertown, um, when I first heard about this breakfast program, I called them to see how their program is going, and they actually have canceled it now because they had um, so few people coming to And it's canceled it also. Yeah, so I think we're doing good. Yeah. Do you it's still proud. have people to take, take it home? Yeah, some people will yeah. take it to go, which they can do. Yeah, there's, there's very few restrictions on what can happen with this program. I mean, one, it's here, it's supposed to be Northampton seniors, people 60 and older, but if somebody has a spouse that's younger, that spouse can be part of it. Um, people can take it to go. And the idea is to get people to have something nutritious. So, so are the people who are attending, are they people that need a healthy meal, or are they doing it more for a social thing, a fun thing to do? It's probably both. 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 Yeah. both. So yeah. some really need a they used to go to Florence Diner, but they don't need yeah. no, like, yeah, I think there are people who really need a nutritious breakfast yeah, yeah, and then uh, to be part of a social group. And I think it's great because there are some people who have come in here for other things and now they come to the breakfast as well. And I think that's good. We have two couples that go in and do the fitness center and then come into the breakfast. Yeah. So, you know, we thank the Department of Elder Affairs and Highland Valley Elder Services for uh, working with that program and that we can have some benefit from it for our seniors. Uh, and we will start serving coffee because that's not something that's provided, coffee or milk, uh, but we've gotten donations. Uh, so next week we'll start serving coffee. And uh, I'm sure people will enjoy that. Uh, and that's what I have for my report. Any questions from anyone on the director's report? Uh, I, just, I just had one thought. I know sometimes in the summer when it's really hot out that this is a cooling center. Mm -hmm. is, is this a warm-up center during the winter months or anything? Is anything like that going on? Um, I want to say previously we've been approached about that, but um, I haven't heard anything this year. It would be from the uh, fire department in consultation with the mayor, they decide if it's a cooling center or a warming center. Oh. I don't think we've ever had it as a warming center. It's been a cooling center. And when there was a fire over at Walter Salvo, people came over here to um, spend time mm -hmm. while that was happening, while they were evacuated. We did get there. a couple that came in yesterday, a senior couple that came in um, and asked if we were a warming center. Um, and Michelle said, that we weren't classified as warming center, but they could come in and use the heat, and then she ended up helping them to do like fuel assistance applications. Yeah, so that's good. It was, you know, they come in for one thing, and you can hook them up with uh, other services. Yeah. yeah. So we have people who um, have come in in the summer or the winter to benefit from either the heat or the the AC. Questions? Hearing none, we'll move on to building and grounds report. Well, with the holidays, it's hard to believe they're already gone. Um, the building was closed December 24th and 25th, and then December 31st, we were closed at noon, and then January 1st. And those were all city departments were closed, um, any city building. Uh, of course, uh, essential serv uh, services were not. I mean, the fire department and police department were closed. Um, and um, on the 31st, 
first night was held here. Um, I think this is the third year that we've had first night activities in the building. Um, so those were from 12 to 6.30. So the building really never closed. Um, so we were closed as a functioning senior center council on aging, but the building was open for the first night activities. Um, Did we rent that? No, that we don't rent it. We, the, the, this is something the city does uh, as a courtesy, and this came from uh, when Claire Higgins was mayor. Uh, they have lost a lot, of, they meaning the um, Center for the Arts had lost a number of venues that had closed, so they weren't able to use those spaces anymore. And so um, it was asked if we could do it. They do pay for the building monitor, and they also pay for the custodian to be in the building. And, <clears throat> excuse me, then last week on January 3rd, there was a snowstorm, and the senior center was closed. I uh, closed the senior center, meaning all activities were canceled. Um, and that is put on the three TV stations, although right now we're having we had to do something different for Channel 22. It's on WHMP, it's on two of the phone um, voicemails, so people call. But when we're closed, we actually, the doors are open, so people can come in and they actually do come in. Um, and then our concern, because the parking lot's not plowed, the, you know, the sidewalks are slippery. But the reason it's closed is because we don't want people coming out. We don't know what the roads are like. Staff still comes in, but we are closed. And I will say that the other thing that happens is that all the instructors tend to cancel their classes. So um, it is to keep people safe and not coming down here. But people still do. Uh, so, uh, what do people come down here for? Is it just? Well, they came down to use a fitness center. They came down to get PVTA tickets oh, so and just come just in to, to, to have a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. So, you know, basically the staff is here and they, the seniors or the general public come in for a variety of things, so we mm -hmm. still work okay. with them, but specific programs and um, activities are, are not happening. Uh, oh, I got more um, on Monday, of this week. The inauguration ceremony was held here and I'm sure you saw a number of pictures that were in the newspaper. It was a wonderful event to have here. It's actually the second time the inauguration ceremony happened here. Uh, back in 2008 uh, it was held here and it was in the morning. This time the inauguration was held at 7 at night and it just was a wonderfully flowing um, event. It happened uh, with a lot of people in the building we had volunteers who were helping us. Um, Mary Lestowski, one of our volunteers, and John Kaczynski on the Friday before made over 400 chocolate chip cookies for it. They were good. Ooh. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and Christine Rassicott, Chris Mulcahy, and Mary Lou Jolson also helped um, and, and Mary Lestowski that night to help things going. And also uh, Crystal and I were here uh, to keep things going and there were a lot of last minute uh, pieces that had to get put together um, for the function uh, but it, it was a nice way for people to get into this building who again would have no reason to come in here um, so they get to see what the building's like who we are get to see some of the things that we have up so they know what we do here um, for the most part we can grab a concrete chronicle on their way out so it was, it was it very well attended so we we're glad to have that in the building um, and uh, I just received a letter too from, I had reported how the DPW reuse committee had their toy exchange uh, reuse here, which was really a marvelous event in the building. <coughs> Excuse me. And so they sent a thank you note, and I just, I want to read it because I think it's very, uh, it makes you know that what you do is really worthwhile. I mean, because again, rentals mm -hmm. in here aren't necessarily to benefit seniors, other than the fact that rentals help us to keep programs ongoing and it helps supplement our budget. So dear Patricia and Northampton Senior Center team, excuse me, <coughs> on behalf of the Northampton Department of Public Works and the Board of Public Works Reuse Committee, I want to extend our sincere thanks for hosting our third annual 
toy exchange on December 6th and 7th. As you may remember, despite a reservation at another venue, we were in search of an alternate site fairly late in the planning game. Your willingness to take a risk on what would have been a boisterous public event in your very is much appreciated. You and your staff were very accommodating and willing to share your equipment and resources. We also appreciate the effort you made to keep our costs low by arranging your schedule so you would be on the premises Friday night, thus avoiding the cost of a building monitor. Part of the beauty of this free, volunteer-driven event is the amount of collaboration and support provided by the community, and the Senior Center was no small part of that support. Thank you. Uh, May your 2014 be filled with good health, happiness, and prosperity. Uh, Susan Wait, Recycling Coordinator. So I just thought that speaks well of the whole building and the staff that's here. And I hope they decide to come back next year because it worked out really well. <laughs> and the other thing I'll just mention about the building is that um, the Florence Savings Bank uh, grant program will be doing their uh, awards here again uh, in March. I believe it's March. Yeah. So we're happy to have them come back. Um, again, that's another great building bringing uh, another great venue in here, bringing in a lot of agencies and uh, people who wouldn't normally be here. Did we qualify? Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know that I haven't gotten a letter, and just because it's going to be held here doesn't mean we are I know, qualifying. I know. So um, usually there's a letter that goes out, and we'll see. And I'll make sure you all know that. And Barbara usually is the person who accepts our award, because Barbara's the one who sits at tables to get people to sign the awards. Because she's got the most money at Florence State. <laughs> so she can vote <laughs> all the time. Shut up. So I'm always like, so great program. They know that. We're glad we benefit from it. Ten numbers. Speaking of, yeah. Barbara, are you available on Sunday to sit in the lobby from yeah. like 11 to probably 11.30, um, because people are going to start showing up around 11. I'll so. nail them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's for the dinner, right? Yeah. Yes. Right. You're going to be here at 11. Yeah. <laughs> remember? Yes, I remember now. Uh, any questions for Patty on the uh, buildings and grounds? Uh, yeah. John? Yep. What's with the urinal? Thank you for asking. After, I'm sorry. Okay. After the meeting last time, the question was about the uh, men's, men's urinal, room. which I don't go in the men's room, so I didn't even know it was not functioning. Um, but Bob said that there's a part being ordered for it, so we're hoping that it comes soon. But in the meantime, what also there are two um, toilets in the women's room that are broken. And what Bob is saying is what people are doing, because he sees the footprint, is that they're hitting the, to flush it with their foot, and it's too much uh, oh, it's pressure. Pressure on it. So we're actually waiting for three toilets, uh, the, I call them the urinal toilet, to be repaired. So, I don't think black. the guys yeah. are kicking the girl. No, no, no. Well, that's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm saying. That's, so anyway, the parts are ordered. <laughs> The parts wow. are ordered for all of them. Okay. So that's the key. It's going to seem like yeah, this no. is like. Well, it's been a long time. I wish we had a field. I think you had told me that it was a number of weeks before yeah. Yeah. the last board oh, meeting. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I don't know the cost of that, and it's central services, and I'm sure you know the parts are ordered and it will be repaired. So, and we're fortunate we have a number of uh, restrooms in the building. How's that? Well, maybe we should start a kickboxing class. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't need one. That's it. Maybe it's a kickboxing class. Always, you know, always believe the men's room must be just as bad. Any other questions? We'll move on to old business. And this is a review of the Saturday opening. Yep. Um, it was um, Elaine Real who had asked that question about. Um, you know, senior centers and about us having Saturday openings, and so I said I would do some research. <coughs> so I have called a number of senior centers. I've also gone online to look at a few of them, and um, I would like to do a sort of a semi-formal uh, report to everyone, but I can just tell you off of all this information that I got that most, um, or I shouldn't say most, any senior center they've actually dealt with thus far, they have no um, extended hours on um, typically on Saturdays or 
uh, Sundays or evenings, that they do have special programming that may occur on a weekend or an evening. Um, some do have a, a night of evening programs, and a lot of times it's because somebody's using their building, somebody other than a, a program for the senior center. So I'll, I'll keep um, investigating more so that I can um, you know, make some comparisons. I will say most senior centers seem to be open Monday through Friday, uh, 8 to 4. Um, Agawan, uh, this was interesting, they're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. And it isn't that they have programs going on, but people can come in and use the building. And they have a custodian that's on duty, and that's the only reason they have it. So um, I guess the custodian may be the person in charge of the uh, building. You know, they have this wonderful fitness center there, and um, they have a, a lot of pool tables that people use uh, in the evening, so that's, that's what happens there. But they don't typically have uh, their own evening programs or Saturday um, programming, Saturday or weekend programs, is how we should have to do it. So I'll get some more information, and, and, and again, you know, as I'm doing this, you know, you can get information about what other senior centers are doing, but that doesn't necessarily reflect on what you want to do. So, and also, who pays for all that? That's the other thing, the open building. Oh, right. There's a cost to having your building open. Um, and I, I'm sure you've heard some of the school districts are talking about having four days of school yeah. to save on things. So, you know, I, again, reviewing all this, it doesn't mean that we wouldn't be interested in doing something on Saturdays or weekends, but I think there's a lot to it. Um, but, you know, we can keep looking at it and figuring it out. Yeah. That, so that's what I have thus far. If anybody wants to look at the notes I have now, you can. Um, and I will, <clears throat> maybe for the uh, February meeting, just put some something sort of semi-formal together for you. Business, the holiday dinner. Yes, let's all get revved up for the holidays again. Um, we had our, our our dinner scheduled in December, but we had that huge snowstorm on Sunday. We had canceled the dinner um, on Thursday because of all of the uh, weather reports, and we erred on the side of caution. And I think we are very fortunate that we did that. So, in any event, um, the Dinner is this Sunday now, and uh, unfortunately Santa Claus won't be able to be here, uh, but it'll be a nice dinner. Um, John Kaczynski and Barbara Kaczynski are heading up the kitchen with the turkey dinners and everything else that goes with it. And it's always a well-received event, and we're going to make it as festive, festive as we can, and I'm sure there'll be a few holiday carols in the whole part of it, and um, we'll just see what happens. It'll be, <coughs> excuse me, it'll be delicious. Yeah, the food is always very good. I think that they do a great job in the kitchen and we have a wonderful array of volunteers coming uh, to help out with it. So it should have a great flow to it. So our holiday dinner is in January. <laughs> That's a great yeah. After holiday dinner. <laughs> Celebrate <laughs> getting through the holidays. <laughs> Right. Do you have anything other on old business? <laughs> no? Anybody have anything on old business? Hearing none, we'll move on to new business. And Highland Valley report, Bob Montague's here. Okay, uh, Highland Valley, uh, due to the projected weather, canceled or postponed their meeting of 1 6th, the Monday, the 6th of January to Monday the 13th of uh, January. Uh, although today both uh, Jim, uh, another board member, and myself were called, we weren't able to answer this <coughs> call. And they may be postponing it or moving it to another date, I don't know. But anyway, uh, projected right now is on the 13th of Monday. I won't be able to attend, I have a previous commitment. So if I can attend, I was going to ask Jim to take notes. Yes, and he's thinking about it. But anyway, that's uh, so we have no report. So we'll, we'll give you a report next month. Okay. Can I just add something? Yes. Uh, so uh, the director from Highland Valley 
of elder services. It's going to come to our March for, uh, board meeting. She'll be here for two o'clock. Everybody will get to meet her and she can meet you. Jared. Jared Jameson. So she'll be here. And I actually, she's coming in next week um, to meet with me and I'm going to give her a tour of the building. Anyone have anything for a new business? Did I mention about deals and steals at the last meeting? I think I did. So, so yeah, and that's a program that is uh, going to be for the neediest of our seniors in the community. Deals and steals has offered to put boxes of food together um, that will get distributed to those who um, need. Uh, nutritious food in their homes and uh, it is going to be uh, again selective as to who's going to be in that program based on their their uh, need who will be doing the selections are the agency mm -hmm. or no, be, i have an assessment that i put together in my senior center it's oh. a checkbox assessment um having to do with basically their income what they have coming in and what they have going out for um, expenses and what they're getting for public benefits already and why you know different whether they're getting a brown bag they're yeah. getting assistance from snap benefits and things like that so that's good yeah they're going to use that information too yeah it's going to be like once a month or it's going to be week? it's going to be every other week Ooh. yeah so twice Ooh. a month and How are these people going to find out? How are they going to find out what? If they, if they qualify or if they can get it. You would notify them. I, I will notify them. I, it's only like a 10 minute, it takes me 10 minutes over the phone to do the assessment. And if they have a, if they do, do not agree with the outcome, then they can meet with the director and I, and I can, and I can show them, you know, based on what they told me that they have coming in for income and public benefits. This program from Deals and Steals perspective they understand that just because you, not just because you receive SNAP benefits or you receive brown bag, doesn't mean that you're truly in need of supplemental assistance because you're already getting it. But we have, like I have seniors that I worked with from the social, when I was a social worker, who they had a combined income of say $1,800 a month. But with the fact that they got very little food stamps, like $22 a month in food stamps, they were paying, full price for their health insurance without any extra health programs, and they are paying for all of their utility expenses plus their property taxes, they actually have more going out monthly than they have coming in. And these are the people that this program from Deals and Steals perspective, Deals and Steals, wants to help those, I don't know if you would consider them to be like almost like working poor, like those who are um, may not qualify for food stamps because they're just over the income, yeah. mm -hmm. but they have more going out for daily for monthly expenses than they have coming in. Because when I was the social worker, we would go through, um, do an evaluation. Like if you go through somebody's expenses and you see that they have $400 a month in cable and internet expenses, you know, then I had no problem saying, well, I can definitely save you some money we can get you on a cheaper cable plan and we can be about i mean i can't make people choose what they want to spend their money on if they want to spend 400 dollars a month on cable and not eat food that's their choice but i'm not going to qualify them for a program where they're going to get extra help because they're choosing to spend 400 dollars a month on cable and internet and not Going with people's necessary living expenses. Their medical are, are expenses, going, their yeah. utility <laughs> expenses, their prescription drug costs, yeah. you know, they don't have taxes the rent, yeah. Yeah. tax yeah. of rent, no, that sort of thing. Yeah. The essential expenses are proceeding what they have to be right now. Exceeding. So deals and steals. <clears throat> Um, operates it's a business in Northampton and they approached us and it's not a program just for the holidays it's something that will be ongoing and um, it will assist and supplement a lot of people's uh, nutrition um, and the other thing I just wanted to add that with the um, holiday dinner if people bring in uh, non-perishable items which will be used for our, our food uh, emergency closet here um, 
they are entered in a special drawing at the dinner. So that helps. What's the drawing? Board. Board. Food. Oh, no, food. Not only no, food. If people bring in the non-perishable goods, yeah. then they get a special uh, ticket that they put their name on, and they will win a uh, gift card uh, that is donated from. Okay. You want to know what the price was? It's a gift card. It's a way of getting a camera, so it's a great board. Thank you. It always is worth it. Yeah, of course. Well, that's what I'm doing anyway. Anything else on your business? Hearing that, we receive a nice thank you card from Maureen Sinkowitz for the flowers and the cards that she's been getting while she was out sick. We certainly appreciate that. You all see the uh, upcoming announcements. Mm -hmm. Do you want to a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Helen Dunn and Barbara seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.